I'm Nathan Simmons, and now it's my dick that's killing me. <laughs> and in my dreams, I can walk. My legs are strong. In my <laughs> dreams, I am the wizard master. <laughs> Welcome to primetime, bitch. Hey! This is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of Nancy Thompson's bleakest dreams. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, part four of five of the spooky linings. We got lucky this season again, fellas. We mm. have five spooky linings this season. Yeah. The only time the only time of the year we do horror movies. It's never only time. any other part of the season. <laughs> it's never allowed. But uh, I got to say, this was my pick because it seemed fitting. Why did you pick the m- Nightmare on Elm Street that probably has the happiest ending of all of them? <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. Because right. truly, there is no happy ending to any of these Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But also- This is the happiest. It's the happiest. That doesn't make it the, the most uplifting. If it's a sliding scale. Yeah, but we're still in the red here. But I will, ah! I will say- Two reasons why I picked this movie for this week. Number one. We're in the light pink. <laughs> <laughs> number one, we have not done a proper Nightmare on Elm Street movie over 150 episodes in, 160 mm. episodes in at this point. Right. So it only felt fitting that we finally do it. But also, fellas, this week, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been a part of the hype, but uh, Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> is coming out this week. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> In hindsight, I probably should have picked the fifth Friday movie or a nightmare movie to do mm. uh, this season. But the Dream Child? The Dream Child. But I went with the Dream Warriors. Mm. I would not have joined you for the Dream Child. I'll just have to say. <laughs> I would have set that one out. You know, not a Super Freddy fan. It only seemed fitting that if we're going to be talking about an 80s movie with a lot of cheese and a lot of camp, mm-hmm. that we bring in an expert. <laughs> someone who is familiar with his territory of movies. And it's, of course, none other. Adam Carolla. <laughs> And this movie was big on VHS, so of course we had to bring in an expert from the VHS files. Yes. Josh Browning. Hello, hello. Let's get to talking. Let's let's get to talking about Freddy. On delay. On delay. delay. (laughs) It should be noted, this movie taught me how to spell on delay. (laughs) I watched this shit with subtitles on, was like, is that how you spell it? Yeah, I I couldn't tell you how on delay is spelled, but uh bet there's an L in there somewhere. (laughs) Yep. Not wrong. Anyway. Dream Warriors, I felt it was appropriate that we talk about this one in particular, because Mm. while the first movie in this franchise is certainly a classic, and the second one is uh, much maligned, I would also say a classic as well, but I know it's much maligned. It's a, I would call it a sleeper hit. It is a sleeper hit. Thank you, Josh. I got it. (laughs) I got it. I just wasn't going to acknowledge it. I was going to keep moving on. Fair enough. I was told on delay, if if you recall. Oh, sure, sure. (laughs) Hurry through. This one was interesting because this one is regarded as possibly the high point Mm. in this franchise. Mm. And I've only seen it twice now. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of more fun on the first time watching it than I did on the second, if I have to be honest. Okay. During the lockdown, I realized I had never seen the majority of the Friday movies and the Nightmare movies. I had only ever seen the originals and the remakes Mm -hmm. of both of those. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch all of these movies. (laughs) sat my white ass down and listened. I did. I listened. (laughs) I opened my fucking ears and I listened. But I got to tell you, most of these movies are dog shit. I got to be honest with you. I'm sorry if this if this is your franchise. Be honest with yourself. Well, I mean, I mean, Friday After Next isn't the best, <laughs> but not. I wouldn't call it dog shit. No, no. It's certainly no next Friday, but, you know. But this one in particular, I think, is at least a fun movie. That was the first DVD I ever owned. <laughs> Friday After Next? Oh, my God. It was just Friday After Next and Sleepers. <laughs> no, Next Friday. Oh, Next Friday. Oh, yeah, Next Friday and Sleepers, which aptly are, you know, very uh, reminiscent of this franchise, Ugh. I should say. In more ways than one. Yeah, yes. exactly, Nathan. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Dream Warriors, I remember having a lot of fun on the first time. And I mm. remember a lot of people hyping this one up. And on this rewatch, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this one. I love this one. Okay. I mean, I, I do think that like there is a spot for the original in, in the pantheon of like 
uh, inventive horror movies that sort of change the game for mm-hmm. better or for worse. Three for me is is my personal favorite of the series, not just because of like the weird effects and the the whole tone of it. I think the tone is like right in between uh, goofy main character Freddy and scary in the shadows Freddy of the first two. Mm-hmm. It's also uh, it's got that sort of I, I don't know. I feel like this is like the film equivalent of going to a haunted house ride, right? Like <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the Chuck Chuck Russell Frank Darabont pairing that brought us the Blob remake. Uh, you know, doing their magic on this one, and I just I, I, I just totally vibed to that tone. And more screaming Mad George yes. from the last movie we talked about, Society. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Society is a wild one, guys. We did an episode <laughs> on that one. Uh, we just did last week. I would say, you know, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street is to Evil Dead what Nightmare on Elm Street three is to Evil Dead two. Like okay. it's just oh, interesting. <laughs> bold. It's kind of it's kind of one of those things in my opinion mm. like it, it, it's it's definitely not as fun as evil dead 2 sure. uh, but it it, it kind of it, it gives you the classic setup from the first one with more added comedy mm-hmm. you know yeah i just want to say josh that is what we like to call boy math by the way <laughs> <laughs> no i i get it i get why people like this movie it's just i don't know when when you've been away for it for a while and you come back to it as someone who is mostly familiar with the original mm-hmm. coming into this you're right nathan this is that fine line between freddie playing uh, Nintendo and being the Wicked Witch of the West <laughs> sure. and the original. And there is some great stuff in this movie. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But between um, Dollar Store, Ben, <laughs> Bill Maher. Oh, my God. And, right. Uh, I have that note. <laughs> Craig Wasson. He, I, we did an episode on Body Double. He was in Brian oh, De Palma's right. Body Double. I love Body Double. I yeah. love Body Double. But between that and just the religion, which I feel like has no place in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, <laughs> yeah. there's just a lot of this movie that- it, Anti-science sentiments. There's that. And, Behold the power of Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> and also- Let's be honest. If you're honest with yourself uh, as a lover of this franchise. Dream lover. The dream powers fucking suck in this movie. <laughs> like, yeah. Patricia Arquette <laughs> could do backflips. Wow. We'll get Amazing. There. Yeah. <laughs> she goes full X Games. <laughs> she goes X Games mode. Uh, fucking awesome. X Games <laughs> mode. <laughs> well, what about, I mean, Taryn just gets leather and, and switchblades. I mean, there's she not. She gets the tiniest switchblades. <laughs> Beautiful and bad. <laughs> Can I ask, did you watch when you were, when you were were binging the Friday the 13th and Nightmare franchises. Did mm-hmm. you watch the Friday the 13th movies first and then Nightmare or how did you do it? Do you remember? I think Did it, you rotate? I think it was Friday first and okay. I think I got all the way up to Jason X and then went back to cuz I had seen Freddy 2. Uh-huh. And I went back to Dream Warriors and started from there and went forward. I think that's your answer right there is that like the Friday the 13th movies are garbage. So <laughs> wildly different in quality and i say that as a as a fan of the franchise i'm currently re-watching them with my partner and uh, we're on chapter four in the final chapter quote unquote <laughs> uh-huh. and she says she says these movies somehow always make me forget that i'm watching a slasher right <laughs> like, <laughs> until like i'm just watching this weird party movie and then some motherfucker jumps out of a lake yeah when you see crispin glover dancing in that one you think you might be watching like 16 candles <laughs> Right. I mean, they do a detour into the Carrie territory with those Friday movies. Oh, yeah. At least, at least the Nightmare movies don't do that. So I'll say that. But, but I think by the time, but if you watched all the Friday the Thirteenth movies, then started Elm Street, and you're like, oh fuck, like Dream Warriors breath of fresh air oh no i will say compared to the friday movies nightmare on elm street is fucking citizen kane but I, I, you get no <laughs> argument from me but i think that's why in your original watch you were just like yeah okay masterpiece <laughs> <laughs> i think that might be you might be right but no i i do think nightmare on elm street at least has the advantageous factor of mm. being interesting because it's in the dreamscape right you right. can do more interesting things than you can with a fucking zombie walking around with a machete yep and i also think we should mention with the, we should say all of this with the caveat that as listeners know, we've covered nine f- Halloween movies. Uh-huh. At this point. Uh-huh. So, I like- will say this. I will say this. The Nightmare on Elm Street series as a whole, if you count every single one of them, mm-hmm. is not a good franchise. However, I think it's more consistent. I am fully cognizant of the fact that they are at least enjoyable movies. Like uh-huh. I actually enjoy part four. I believe it's part four with the recursion of coming out of the diner, getting in the truck. Yeah. I love part four. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. If if you're going, and you know, if you're going 
going on solid continuity alone <laughs> right. with, the, with these top three franchises like nightmare holds the candle on that one sure uh the the other two really go off the rails i honestly like halloween is my favorite freaking horror movie of all time but mm -hmm. i think that franchise is such a pile of garbage <laughs> I think all of these franchises and we're all we're saying this too by the way when we're recording this on the eve of the wild accusation that Saw X is a good movie, which I find baffling. <laughs> More gory than Terrifier 2. You're going to have to impress me there. Well, there's that and the fact that it's Rotten Tomato scores in the 80s when the original is in the 50s, right. which I think is fucking baffling. That is wild. Yeah. I, again, just admit that these movies are garbage and that's okay. It's okay to like garbage. I, I like some of the worst movies out there. Like it is okay to like garbage. And this movie does have some interesting things in it, but as a whole, I don't think the movie holds together very well. I think that's fair. it's got some interesting ideas, but a lot of filler, a lot of fluff. But DC, Lawrence Fishburne is in this no, movie. No, 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 no. Lawrence Fishburne is not in this movie. Larry, Larry. Fishburne is in this movie. <laughs> some respect on his name. My fault, my fault, Put my fault. Respect. On his name. We got a Paul Stephen Rudd situation here, <laughs> but uh, but but I mean. It's got to have a little bit of clout for the fact that I mean, yeah, you got you, you got an Oscar winner right? in this one, guys. Yeah. Sure. No, I I think there is good aspects of this movie. I think Patricia Arquette is pretty good in this movie. Although oh, man, we're going to talk about most of her dialogue is reduced to just screaming. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> she, this is next to Kim Basinger in Batman '89. This is the screechiest performance of the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does have that one moment where she goes, uh, "God bless." I, I think. Kincaid is a fucking uh, highlight of this movie. I think uh, Larry Fishburne's a highlight of this movie. And I think for the most part, Robert England is a pretty good highlight. Well, <laughs> Mally, what, what is, how do you feel about the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, like, as a whole? So, the one I've seen the most was two, because that shit was always on TV when I was a kid. Sure, yes, same. sure. Yeah. Which was a fucking bummer. You don't like two, or you're just a bummer <laughs> that that was the one that was on versus all the others? Both? Okay. <laughs> Was that it? Or you? No, that's all I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, wait. DC question. Sure. When you rewatched, when you watched all these for the first time, did you watch the Platinum Dunes remakes? Okay. We'll go ahead and get this out of the way because I know the remake is a contentious spot for people of this franchise that like it. And as someone who came to this franchise late, mm -hmm. who didn't grow up with these movies, I will say, and I, I, I'm expected to get shit for this, <laughs> I actually like the remake. Uh, and I know a lot of people hate it. Garbage. And that is a valid criticism. <laughs> <laughs> garbage That's i fair. think the remake i think the remake has some good ideas yep. i love the micro nap stuff yep. i don't think it is explored nearly enough sure and i think that movie fell victim to some uh rewrites during filming because the original pitch i think was that it was supposed to play more with the idea that freddie might have been innocent yes, yes. Yeah, and that was fucking interesting. Yep. Yeah, that was something they toyed with with the script for this movie. That's actually, right. too. Yeah, I think we'll probably do that movie eventually on the show. I thought about using it as my pick me up just to be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'll say as someone who likes that movie, I admit its pitfalls. Mm -hmm. I think Jackie Earl Haley is a very good choice for that character, but I don't think the writing of that movie does him any services. Yeah, and nothing in that movie was Jackie Earl Haley's fault. It right. was just a shit shit script that tried to too hard really i like that it uh reigned in a lot of the comedy even though they try to give him some comedic lines i think they fall pretty flat like the wet dream line is really upsetting he plays them dead seriously yes, it does. that movie has one of the most insane things i've ever seen which is when when nancy's mom is telling her about freddie mm -hmm. she she says to nancy you were one of his favorites yeah. like, oh, i would anyone say uh, that to their child <laughs> well here's what i'll say about that and this is the part i found interesting in, in the movie which is in that first original nightmare on elm street mm -hmm. wes craven's intention that he was not only a child murderer but right. also a child predator right yes and you know new line uh or whoever who, who made the first was it new line yeah it was, it was, it was new line's first movie i think the house that freddie built right, right. They reined him in for that to make it more ambiguous. And the fact that the remake decided, no, let's go full forward with that, mm -hmm. I found is disturbing, which is the fucking point of a horror movie. Make that character disturbing. But that's the wild thing about Freddy becoming like a Bart Simpson level mm -hmm. cultural icon in the mm -hmm. 80s. <laughs> it's like you could literally call like a 1 800 line to talk to Freddy, uh -huh. like at one point in the 80s. I shit you not, man. I had one of the pull string Freddy toys, like the dolls. <laughs> oh, I God. Had one. Oh, I 
I had one of those, but it was Pee Wee Herman, and it was fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I had Ernest, uh, which I, you know what? That makes sense that you would have Ernest of all of them. <laughs> It really does. Like, that's our dichotomy. <laughs> Fuck, that's the crossover I want to see. <laughs> Ernest goes to Elm Street. Yeah, oh my god, yes. <laughs> Freddy scared stupid. <laughs> see, if I had Pee Wee Herbid, you had Freddy, and you had Ernest Nathan, it would make Can sense we make that- make them kiss? <laughs> it would make sense then that Mally would have- <sighs> Like Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin would be I'm sweating. <laughs> My favorite toy as a kid was just a wooden cow. I love that, <laughs> that so that much. That explains it all. Yeah. Explains all of it. Can I just put a capper <laughs> on the remake talk and say that I also actually really like the Friday the 13th remake? It's I the do best. Too. I oh, mean, you just like boobs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least that movie has perfect, perfect nipple, nipple placement. placement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupendous tits. And the fact that it's in line with the Transformers franchise. We oh my cannot gosh, forget yeah. that. That is a huge milestone to that movie. Yeah. Ashley and I <laughs> talked about that on Oh, That's a Scary Movie. She's like, where the fuck is that movie? Wait, <laughs> what? Oh, Mala, we don't have time to get into this. One of, the we characters, do not have <laughs> one of the characters in the Friday the 13th remake is also in Michael Bay's first Transformers movie. He sure is. <laughs> same character name, same actor, it's everything. Amazing. <laughs> All right. I guess this is nobody's first time watching this movie. It sounds like we've all seen this movie at least once before. So on this rewatch, before we get into all the production notes and all that good stuff, mm. everyone seems to be fairly positive on this rewatch. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think it's a fun time. Yeah. Okay. Josh? I think it's a fun time. Okay. But I I felt a little differently this time and we'll we'll get into it. Okay. Mally? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> what do <are> we... <laughs> I mean, this. how can you not like this movie? It has the FDS in it. The what? The Freddy Dick Snake. The Freddy Dick Snake. <laughs> oh, God damn it. All right. Why don't we talk about some of the notes surrounding Friday the 13th, part three. No, wait. A Nightmare on Elm Street. God damn it. I knew that was going to happen. A Nightmare on Elm Street, part three, colon, Dream Warriors, colon, movie film for theaters. <laughs> So the part where Freddy and Jason first fight is just fucking wild. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. It is unprofessional that I show up to the recordings of these episodes really faded off of lemon drop martinis. When did you... So you, you, you're you just still rolling with the lemon drops from like four episodes ago. I'm still okay. reeling off Exorcist 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I, I bought a lot of vodka for that episode and I still had some lingering. So. You got big Donald Pleasance on the set of Halloween 4 energy. <laughs> it's all right, Dustin. I'm working on my second bowl right Right now, so. There you go. <laughs> of cereal? Cocoa yes. Puffs. Yeah, Cocoa absolutely. Puffs. Absolutely. <laughs> it is a Sunday afternoon. Afternoon. Food. Oh, man. We got to throw this whole episode of the garbage. <laughs> How do y'all motherfuckers can talk today? <laughs> I, I will say, if if this franchise has taught us anything with Freddy versus Jason, it's that Freddy really enjoys himself a good bowl. So <laughs> that's true. That's, that is totally apt. That's true. That is totally apt. Mm. So the year, my friends, is 1987. Uh, the director is old Chuck Russell. Mm. 2023, but sure. <laughs> the movie stars <laughs> Craig Wasson, Heather Langenkamp, Patricia Arquette, Larry Fishburne, as he is credited in the movie. Yeah. Why would he go by Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla Pointer and Robert England. And I'll say this. We did Halloween Part 6, when it wasn't necessarily Paul Rudd that was credited. Yes. And that was his technically his first movie, right? Between that and Clueless? Yeah, shot those back to back. I think there is this this uh, interesting history with horror movies where a lot of people come in and get credited something different because it's their first movie and then change it afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's to be disassociated with that movie or to be taken a little more seriously. Seriously, Larry to Lawrence, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, maybe. Was Jennifer Aniston credited as Jennifer Aniston in Leprechaun? Yeah. And she was Blennifer Grantich. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the movie had a budget. This is interesting. A budget of $4.5 million and managed to gross $45 million hey. worldwide. Ten times that budget. That's impressive. Hell yeah. And you guys are never going to fucking believe this. 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Freddie Dick Snake, baby. Does anyone here want to revisit the trailer for A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3? Yeah. Not really. Let's do it. Let me hear it. I, I'm going to press play and we'll see what happens. Start it from the beginning. Oh, this was rated R. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love that old school new line. Yeah. Logo. Retro, baby. 
Oh, shit, is this a secret Saw movie? <laughs> it's actually uh, Pee Wee Herman's bike. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think Saw got it from? Fair enough. There's a, there's a lot of filmmakers that stole stuff from this movie. I'll talk about one later. Oh, okay. Yeah, The Matrix stole Larry Fishburne. <laughs> <laughs> and Pee Wee. And Severin stole Patricia Arquette. I can't believe them. Fuck! It's so funny how many of these Freddy movies had, like, a trailer that had nothing to do with the actual film. Like, because they were just cranking these out so fast. Mm-hmm. You know a little something about cranking it out. <laughs> <laughs> sure do, buddy. <laughs> I guess we should say because there's not much happening in this trailer. It's just a teaser of a person sitting in a bed with a dollhouse. That's really all you're seeing if you've never seen this trailer. <laughs> the trailer for part five is just like a creepy slow-mo shot of a, of a bassinet, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Here's some action, at least. Here we go. (laughs) That's what my sleep paralysis demon looks like. (laughs) I I think they should bring these trailers back. Yeah. Because honestly, we get get too much out of the trailers now, and it just ruins the damn movie. Like, I would much rather see that an actual fucking teaser for the movie do you guys remember the the teaser for terminator 2 where mm-hmm. it's like in the factory building a terminator yes. like, i was just about to bring that up it was it, that's what this one reminded me of was that one i want teaser trailers just that are not in the actual movie that'd be yep. great or like a more modern example the first dark knight teaser oh, there you go yeah just the logo breaking apart yeah. with a couple of sound clips yeah, great yeah. teaser yeah now no, now the trick is, is they just put stuff from the movie that's not that's not in the movie at all in the yeah. trailer <laughs> all the <laughs> deleted scenes yeah and uh make you think you th- yeah make you think you're gonna see it like that fucking rogue one trailer man uh, i love rogue one but i definitely want to see the tr- the actual movie that they showed me the trailer for yeah <laughs> you know a little interesting tidbit about that is before a movie is theatrically released you can put anything in the trailer that was filmed for the movie whether it actually ends up in the movie or not mm-hmm. but once it goes to home entertainment, you're only allowed to put the stuff that is in the theatrical release of that movie. Yep. Wow, interesting. Hence the Anna de Armas mm-hmm. law, uh, yesterday lawsuit. <laughs> so thankful that judge saw clearly, because that was the dumbest fucking lawsuit I think I've ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> and that is coming from somebody who genuinely loves Anna de Armas. Sure. Like, get the fuck out of here with that ridiculous, frivolous lawsuit. <laughs> okay. Is there any other preamble we want to talk about before we get into this movie proper? I mean, I love that this is the movie that starts the uh, the pretentious. I was going to say the beginning with the Edgar Allan Poe. How dare this movie? That is bold to start your cheesy <laughs> slasher movie with an Edgar Allan Poe quote. Sure. Wow. But here's my first question I wanted to ask you guys before we get really into this movie, mm. uh, because this doesn't happen until like two thirds of the way through the feature. But what would your dream powers be? Oh gosh, to fight Freddy Krueger. Um, I'm gonna let you guys sit on that for a minute, and we can continue talking. But think about it for a minute. You just answered it for me. I'd be, I'd sit on him. You'd sit <laughs> on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would would it be like the uh, the guy from Six Hundred Pound Life? That doctor would come in and tell you you got to lose some weight in the dream. I don't know what that is, but probably. <laughs> oh my god, you don't know that guy. Oh my god, no. David. I I'm not a huge fan of reality TV, but mm. the doctor from Six Hundred Pound Life does not give a shit about people. It is the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> His response is always, well, you got to lose fucking weight. That that would be my <laughs> other dream power is I could watch all reality TV before Freddy gets me. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, I think my dream power, at the very least, compared to the kids in this movie, would be uh, have a fucking gun. That would at <laughs> least be my minimum. Like the bare minimum is shoot Freddy in the fucking face. <laughs> so that's my dream power. Mally, have you thought about it or you want some time? Uh, My power would be to be heard on this podcast on the episode <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a meta joke that no one's gonna get when they're listening to it. this episode's <laughs> cursed uh josh what's your dream power uh, i don't know laser eyes I mean, hey, I, no. that is better than i don't know talking which is one of yeah. their powers in this movie talking loud he talks it loud Ooh, big whoop <laughs> <laughs> i i just i think i feel like that's one of my 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 criticisms of this movie is mm. it, it feels kind of lazy when it comes to the dream stuff. I think part of it is because uh, Darabont and Chuck Russell wrote a $20 million screenplay and then we're told you have four. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if Frank Darabont's legacy as a filmmaker is, you know, any relevance to this, it, he, he should be 
fully embraced in that idea sure. because The Walking Dead was the same thing, oh, I and know. I feel like most of his movie making career is the same thing. So, but, uh, apparently, in one draft of the script, like instead of the Wizard Master fight, there was like a giant Transformer robot. I'm, I'm into it, Freddy. I'm into a, a kaiju version of Freddy. Sure, let's do it. It's better than Super Freddy, uh, which you get in the next movie. <laughs> I think Super Shredder in TMNT two was a more interesting idea than Super Freddy. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. A dream power. That is a dream. I mean, I just, I just feel like. Across the board, that's the reason I am not super down on these movies. Is mm. they have the luxury of setting themselves in a dream world where anything is possible, right. and it just it feels unimaginative in almost every aspect of it. I think nowhere is that worse than like Freddy versus Jason, yeah. where they had a fifteen million dollar budget. Right, and the best they can come up with is CGI caterpillar and got your nose. <laughs> CGI caterpillar got your nose and pinball sound effects. That's the best they could fucking do. Okay, but that rules. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's the lo- I think it's the lower quality Friday movies. Or you got me fucked up. Freddy now. the Thirteenth. Uh, it's the lo- it's the lower quality nightmare movies that actually like went for the creative stuff yeah. and the dreams, like the creative kills. But it just the movies were so bad that the kills don't earn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, that's why I think four is so good because four has like the cockroach kill and that's, the deflating yeah. kiss and like all that stuff. The Roach Motel is so good. Can I tell you? One of the reasons I put Dream Warriors on the calendar this season was because I had missed, I kind of blended part three and part four together, and I thought the Roach Mattel one was in this one. There's a lot of similarities, for sure. We definitely got to do, and it's, is it part four or part five that has the motorcycle death in it? Five, five. has the motorcycle death. God yeah. damn it. See, if I would have done four, I'd have been pissed off that the motorcycle death wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. And it rules. Yeah, these these movies all blend together for me for a little bit, but... um no, I think that original one had the advantage of not only embracing the dream world aspect of it, but also being scary. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 body bag that drags itself through the high school is That's the best scare in the entire series for me, is that right. that sequence in the hallway. Right. It's fairly unimaginative, but if you put yourself in the dream world and put yourself in a low budget mindscape, yeah. it it fucking rules. Same with like the bed swallowing fucking Johnny Depp hole. Like <laughs> it rules. <laughs> I don't know why that deserved a laugh, but there Johnny you go. Depp hole just got me really <laughs> 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 all right all right fellas gross my next note is that ch- chasing coffee grounds with a diet coke is yeah. be maybe the worst mouth feel of all time I, I watched this with my wife this was the no first way. time my she's wife. ever seen it and she, when she put that <laughs> when she put that spoonful of coffee in her mouth my wife went Ugh. i think i gotta put more to my wife on the soundboard i think it i have to <laughs> please don't point. no just let me do it please <laughs> So, yeah, Patricia Ar- Arquette's mom mm-hmm. bringing home a guy at one in the morning. She's joining the proud tradition of terrible moms in this series. This yeah. movie loves terrible moms. This whole franchise. Calls her doc a shrink, uh, like is ignoring her because she's trying to get laid. She just wants attention. Yes. Every time something goes wrong with Kristen, she's like, I, she just wants attention. She screams at her maid. Like, <laughs> it's the worst. I just love this guy that is off screen. You just hear him downstairs going, hey, where's the bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> I said, where's the fucking bourbon? This guy fucking rules. You never even see him on camera. And yeah, Chris's mom does fuck. She sure does. <laughs> I just, I love that guy. I'm glad we never see him. It's the funniest fucking part of this movie to me. My headcanon is that it's Alice's dad from uh, Nightmare 4. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> oh my God. What a crossover. My note, my note for here was just like, you know, no wonder we're all fucked up. I mean, this is the way we thought about mental health in the, in the 80s. Oh, this sure. is the way they portrayed in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, this movie is not a not a uh, very high mark in terms of mental illness in movies for sure. And I I do say it's kind of daring what they do with Patricia Ar- Arquette's character here, mm. which we'll get there in a second. But I wanted to ask because at this point she falls asleep, yeah, and she ends up in the infamous dream world where Freddy reigns supreme. Uh-huh. He's got these little girls that are always there singing his little song, doing <laughs> jump ropes and riding tricycles. And I gotta ask. Not a question, I guess, just a a thought that I'm having, which is, I don't think I've ever understood what the little girls in the dreams are. Like, are they... Are they past victims? Yeah, I think they're meant to be representative of the of the other souls he's claimed, like the kids that he killed. Okay, because in the movies, he only ever kills teenagers, and right. these are like adolescents. He did kill little kids before he was burned, okay. and then like they grew up after he was killed, I think is the implication. Right. Okay. What, the thing that always confuses me is why the fuck he keeps going back to specifically Nancy's house in the dream that's, world. That's a great question. I've never understood why the house- To the point where- like. 
like even the little girl here says like this is his house yes. this is where he takes us and by the way every time patricia arquette yells uh hey little girl i think about <laughs> danny mcbride and hot rod <laughs> <laughs> i don't like cherry it upsets my stomach <laughs> hey little girl i don't like cherry it upsets my stomach <laughs> man pools are perfect for holding water god damn it I don't, it, it would never work for the show. I want to do Hot Rod on the show once. I mean, Frank shits his pants and that's the very end of the movie. Yeah. If you want to count that as the dark ending of the movie. I, I, I kind of do. It does end on a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> does it, does it feel like the tar floor that Patricia Arquette is running in? It just feels like a retread. Nailed it. Ew. God damn it. Of the marshmallow flooring from the first movie. It, it does, but I love, before they show the tar floor, I love the shot of her trying to run and not moving because mm-hmm. that's such a perfect nightmare image. Yeah, yeah. It's just the same with like the elongated hallway and yeah. stuff like that. Like My note was is her feet got stuck in the swamp of sadness from Never Ending Story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that little girl would have been the horse that she just had to leave behind. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved having to see that instead. That would have been hilarious. So she she wakes up, quote unquote, from this dream and she goes to the bathroom. And I actually do like the faucet handles on the sink turning into hands. Oh, I think that's yeah. a great little visual. This is one of the most memorable moments of the movie for me. Yeah. And this is where I think the movie is interesting because then it turns into if you haven't seen the movie, uh, this character, Patricia Arquette, had been trying to stay awake, fell asleep into the dream world, managed to get out, quote unquote. But uh, Freddie slashes her wrist with his knife glove. But in the real world, it just looks like she cut her wrist with a razor blade. It's a pretty, sh- it's a shocking image. It too. is. Like you're not like, I feel like we, we don't really put that in movies yeah. <laughs> anymore. Like, and I just, I am always surprised by it. Yeah. And uh, the justification for this whole premise of this movie is that um, Patricia Arquette's mom puts her into this mental hospital because she tried to kill herself. Mm-hmm. And that is where the quote unquote dream warriors are. This is the group that we get introduced to. Mm-hmm. We get introduced to a young bearded Larry Fishburne, gotta love him. Who's blaming parents doing too much acid in the seventies for mm-hmm. this? <laughs> we, we, the radio tells us there is a suicide epidemic happening, yes, which yeah. is such a wild concept to build a teen movie on. It reminded me of like the the universe they kind of set up for in Freddy's Dead, oh, where sure. like all the children have died and all that shit. See, it reminded me of Heather's, yes. yeah, from the suicide yeah. epidemic. <laughs> I love my gay son. <laughs> I love my dead gay son. <laughs> This is where we get introduced to the Dream Warriors, though. We've got Kincaid. Uh, we've got Joey. We've got, is it Taryn? That's her name, right? Taryn. Taryn. Yep. Um, who's the TV girl? I can't Jennifer. remember. Jennifer. Jennifer. Right. And then who is the other boy? Is it Philip? Philip, who I think is, I think that actor is very good. Yeah. He's got some very overwritten lines, but we'll get there when we get yes, there. Yes. Yes. And of course, we get introduced to, and I'm going to try and do this in my best jigsaw voice. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Gordon. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> Which is Craig Watson, who is playing Dr. Gordon in this movie. And he's kind of the head of this group of, uh, of teens that have, quote unquote, been trying to commit suicide or they're on suicide watch Mm -hmm. and it turns out they all have been dreaming about this same disfigured burnt man with the dirty brown hat and the christmas sweater and we also meet dr sims Mm -hmm. who sucks who is like the nurse ratchet of this movie like (laughs) she oversees this department she doesn't want she, she's a traditionalist, like a conservative. Like, there's no such thing as mental illness. This kid just need a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they need a nap. They need a nap, and they need some bourbon right now. <laughs> Put him in the chokey. <laughs> what I find so funny about this conversation between he and 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 Doctor Gordon here, or her and Doctor Gordon here is, mm-hmm. it, he's all like gung ho about keeping his kids under his supervision, and he doesn't want this new hot shot coming in and like taking over. And then when Nancy gets there, he's like, "Oh wait, hey, you can be in my dreams, baby." Like he, he like falls. <laughs> for her so hard. I am unclear on the age disparity between Dr. Gordon and Nancy in this movie. I am unclear. He is trying to fuck Nancy. Yeah. There is no question about no, it. Clearly, but I am unsure what the age difference is here because he seems like he could be her dad. Yeah. And that's not sexy at all. So. Well, the 80s were a different time. Yes. Well, sure. Sure they were. Maxine coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a recurring thing in this movie that I find interesting, which is people getting sliced by sharp objects and not reacting. Oh, I know. Because 
Patricia Arquette gets a scalpel here and attacks Larry Fishburne, who yeah. does not react to having his arm slashed by her. And he's just got a fucking Band-Aid on yes. it later. It's like, she just cut you with a scalpel. Yes. Like, <laughs> he doesn't react at all. I so, gotta say, though, this, this reintroduction with Nancy finishing the rhyme rules. Yes. I love this moment. So Nancy, who was not present during the second movie, right. is reintroduced to the franchise here. She comes in. She's got a gray streak in her hair, which I love. Well, because there's that there's that great moment in the first one where her hair starts to turn white and yes. she says, I look like I'm 30. Yeah. Yes, yes, it does. And she comes in and here's here's my thing with Heather Langenkamp. Uh-huh. Langenkamp, I should I'm sorry. Oh, God. I think she's great in that first movie, but I also simultaneously think she's not a great actor. I think she is. I think she plays the reality of the situation really well in the first one mm-hmm. i find i think she's a little over her head in this one and new nightmare i think she's over her head in that one too a little bit i i think she's better in new nightmare but okay. i i i think that movie works because everyone's kind of muted and asleep in that one in a weird way sure yeah. um but i yeah i i find some of her reactions in this one to like when she hears that a kid cut his own eyelids off, her reaction is essentially like the lady in Wishmaster. Just going like, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, her. I noticed that this watch and I, I love Heather Linden Camp in, in that first movie. And mm-hmm. I loved yeah. her in this one when I was a kid. Uh, we'll talk about that more as we get into it. But noticing it this watch, I was like, she's she's not. She's not given her best in this movie. She's not great. She is also truly like a hero in the horror community. Like, yes, a, a brilliant. I don't want to disparage her her as a person right. for sure and her contributions to the horror community. I just think brilliant special effects artist and yes. one of the few final girls that like uh, doesn't shit on yeah. her, her the beginning of her career. No, I, I think like again, I think she's really good in that first one. Yeah. I think she's kind of sleepwalking through this one, and I kind of think she's sleepwalking through that new nightmare. But it's because she's got that hypnosil going yeah, on, man. Right. She's sleepwalking because of that. Maybe she's just so fucking tired because she hasn't been able to go to sleep. But no, I she comes in here and she drops her purse at some point. Uh-huh. And I gotta say, dude, if a woman drops her purse, don't go through her shit as you're quote unquote helping her. No. Don't read her pill bottles. Just read just wrote rotating in his hand reading every inch of this pill bottle it is so gross <laughs> and i guess we could talk about craig Wasser a little bit too i think he's great in body double but i also think he's he plays a clueless character pretty well yes. in this movie again i think he's a little bit in, in over his head well he, it also doesn't help that like some of the contrivances in the script force him to play dumb i mean that <laughs> we'll talk about it as we go on but it's so wild to me that like a kid shoves their head into a television and the staff goes well clearly this was a suicide yes yeah. yes yeah no i i, I don't know i I think he's- if, I'm, if I'm Dr. Gordon, anytime someone's talking about dream powers or or someone gets their head shoved through a TV, I'm that Jennifer Lawrence, like, Hot Ones meme where I'm just like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Nathan, if you're a doctor, we're all fucked. <laughs> No, I just, I think Craig Watson fits a very specific palette, mm. and it is not this one. Um, New rules. <laughs> <laughs> hey. New rule, Craig Watson shouldn't be in horror movies. How about that? He, he, he didn't have a whole lot of time to shine. I mean, yeah. I only really know him from this and Body Double. I think mm. he's done a couple of other things, but. Not a he, big Aquila and the Bee guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, his candle was very short lived, it, it burned out really quickly. But he has some of the best parts at the end of this movie, I will say. We'll talk oh, about yeah. it when we get there. This is where we officially get introduced to Kincaid. And my first note about him is just, man, Kincaid fucking rules. He's the best. They keep talking about, oh, he keeps lashing out all the time. And he has to go to the quiet room, basically. And this is Larry Fishburne walking uh, Patricia Arquette around the facility, introducing him to all the characters. And he says, well, it means I have to look at your ugly face a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> right. so I really enjoy that. One thing Larry Fishburne says. Uh, we stop well, what's calling his name him in the Larry? Movie? <laughs> <laughs> I should probably call him his character's name. but Larry Fishburne? Um, I, I do not remember. Let me uh, Morpheus. <laughs> Max. Max. Max is his name. Uh, he, uh, when he's introducing Nancy to everybody, he's like, oh, they're all good kids, but they're dangerous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, he's like, it's like, again, like we're viewing mental, the mental health in the eighties was just like, oof, yeah. well, we'll, we'll talk about also not just mental health, but drug abuse later. Cause there is a character in this movie oh that gets gosh. away scot-free that yeah, does yeah. not feel like it, they should. No, absolutely. So Patricia Arquette falls asleep again. And I do like this effect of the living room kind of tearing itself apart 
art that she's in in Freddy's house. I think that's pretty great. Oh, yeah. And she gets swallowed up by this giant Freddy... Freddy Dickworm. Freddy Dickworm. I guess there's no other way to say it. Freddy does his best Nancy Reagan impression. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> He's God. Goat. He swallows half of Patricia Arquette. And this is where we get introduced to the idea of dream powers mm-hmm. because Patricia Arquette manages to pull Nancy into her dream. And I got to say, the one weapon in life I never want to have to utilize is a glass shard. Mm. It sounds awful, but... It's so nuts that that happens in so many movies where someone's so like, here's many. a piece of glass I will pick up with my hand. And, and and no repercussions. Their hand is totally fine after that. But Nancy picks up a piece of glass, stabs the Freddy Dick worm, and he just look. he he recoils, uh, spits out Patricia Arquette, and just looks at Nancy and goes, you! I love that moment. It is great, because it's like, finally these, these two icons are back together f- fighting again. But it also, this is when Kristen reveals that she can wake up on command which would like severely help later in the movie that's the dream power more yeah. than the backflip she does well you know what nathan i thought the same thing and i was as i was watching it mm-hmm. but later she you know when the, late in the, in the finale of the movie mm. you know you're like that would be pretty convenient to be able to just wake up right now but she says they sedated her so oh, she that's can't right. wake herself up you're right yeah they gave them all hypno cell by the end of the movie yeah. yeah josh keeping me honest <laughs> <laughs> i got a question now that i'm thinking about it have you guys ever had a a nightmare or a dream about freddy krueger no, no. you no, I, I've I've had nightmares about Michael Myers before, but never Freddy. I've had Chucky, and that's the only one. I've had dreams about Nathan, but I wouldn't call him nightmares. <laughs> hey, ooh, I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> you are not invited, DC. You are not invited. All right, listeners, start your fan fiction now. <laughs> Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was the first horror movie I ever saw mm. when I was a kid. And I like the opening of that movie where he's building the glove and chasing Tina around. Right. I saw that. And when that cold open stops, I like ran to the bedroom and got under the covers. <laughs> and just furiously <laughs> masturbated. <laughs> wow. Um, he didn't say no. I didn't. <laughs> he sure did. Um, <laughs> this is where um, Joey and I can't remember the nerdy kid's name. Who is that kid's name? Will or Will. 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 Yeah. They're playing this ripoff D&D game that seems boring as hell. It seems fucking off, especially when you're playing with a mute kid. What is the game <laughs> here? I don't point, understand. That's a great point, actually. Fuck. He, he tells Taryn that she has to say it to like when she rolls her die. Right. And like, okay, so are you going to say that same shit to Joey right. who's sitting right next to you who's mute? Like, right. right. Yeah, This, like you said, this movie is is not very uh, appealing to people that actually have these illnesses. So it it puts them in a box. Taryn's the Chevy Chase of the group, so she <laughs> leaves the game. <laughs> She leaves the game, but she comes back for the for the movie. That's right. Well, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see what maybe happens. Not. Probably not. Probably not. And and this is what I'll say, because this is where we get introduced to the claymation puppet. This is the first night scene mm-hmm. where uh, Philip falls asleep. If nothing else with this franchise, yeah. I will say it is cool to see them get very inventive with the effects, because yeah. in this movie alone, we get stop motion, we get a superimposed Freddy Krueger in a lot of different scenes. Mm-hmm. We also get claymation, which is what we get here with the claymation Freddy Krueger Kruger doll puppet that comes off the wall as these I forget which character it is that makes these little figurines and stuff. Philip. Philip does. That makes sense. Yeah. Because he, he says, he, he actually like kind of foreshadows his death because he's like, they won't let me have a knife to whittle them because I might, you know. Yes. And fellas, this, <laughs> this for my money. I'm oh, sorry, you go ahead. No, no, I, I know what you're going to say and I'm going to echo it. Someone fucking go. I know, I, I know what you're going to say. I'm going to echo it. This is the worst death in the franchise. When you say worst, do you mean like most upsetting or physically? Yeah, it is the most painful. Oh. Yes. It is the most most visceral it's the nastiest kill of the entire series for me so if you haven't seen this movie this is the first real kill of the movie this freddy puppet that is in claymation which again is super awesome yeah comes off the wall in this room uh, i would watch an entire movie of the little tiny marionette freddy just fucking shit up me <laughs> fucking too me too he comes off the wall freddy versus jack skellington <laughs> yes <laughs> Freddy and the Giant Peach. Uh, he comes off the wall. Get Tim Burton on the phone, quick. <laughs> he approaches the sleeping kid, Philip, who does have like the most quippiest lines in the movie. I will say I'm not super upset that he was the first to go. Nathan, do you recognize this guy? Uh, H- have you ever seen this guy in anything else? He lo- did look familiar to me, but I didn't look him up. Have you seen Class of 1999? Oh, shit. Yes, I have. He is the main guy in that movie. Oh. That's the only other thing I know this guy from. Fantastic. Right. Well, anyways. 
Uh, Freddy rips out in his in the dream world, rips out this kid's arteries and tendons yeah. and operates him like a marionette puppet through his veins. It's, it's hard to even look at. It is the most visceral, physically looking thing I think I've seen in this franchise. It is upsetting. <laughs> when you told me last week that, that uh, Screaming Mad George did makeup effects on this one, like it totally makes sense to me now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the cockroach kill in part four was probably my favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is probably my second. Like this is the kill that stuck out to me when I saw this movie as a as a kid. For me, in this movie in particular, it solidifies the horror nature of it. Yeah. Because all the other kills are for the most part kind of funny. Yeah. Mostly. This one is not funny at all. But also mean spirited. Even yes. <laughs> I think they're all so mean spirited. <laughs> they are, especially with Jennifer's, which we'll get to. But oh my gosh. This one is rough because he's operating this kid like a marionette puppet. He walks him to the top of this tower and essentially makes him fall off this tower to his death. All while the kids in the movie, and this is a great scene because there's one kid that's bound to a wheelchair. That's Will, who sees Philip about to fall to his death, tells the mute kid, Joey, go get help. Joey can't really get help. So he gets this metal tray and he's just running up and down the halls, smacking the doors, trying to make as much noise as possible. It is great filmmaking from this aspect of it. I do think the shot of uh, Philip walking through the door is so like i i wish we just didn't have that because mm. I, I it's one of those like what are the rules moments for me <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair I, I i feel like not only in the dream nature of it like what are the rules of the dream world aspect of it but mm-hmm. what is the worlds of this mental hospital because these kids are allowed to roam freely smoke cigarettes <laughs> like it's like it's nothing well they're allowed to roam freely on their floor but if you notice the reason he has to walk through that door is because it's got a padlock on it right mm-hmm. they won't let them leave the the floor right right and that's the thing that gets me about this kill and especially with the female doctor in the next scene mm-hmm. it, it is how they're talking about how he did this and, and it's suicide and all that stuff like you had a padlocked door how do you think that kid got there that's fair neil is a piece of shit <laughs> dr gordon dr gordon says yeah philip gave up on oh us. my god he was a coward. it was a cowardly thing oh my god he's yelling at these kids he's like he was a coward that's a terrible way to go out he gave up on us I'm like this is the worst therapist i've ever seen he's the worst <laughs> doctor of all time and my wife is going Literally. to school right now for her <laughs> master's in psychology and she's like she saw that and she was like this movie is terrible yeah. right <laughs> it is steeped in the 80s culture for sure i mean wasn't it wasn't it jenny lou when whenever we did the halloween episode for vhs files that was just like really upset about the treatment of mental patients yeah like, yeah yeah she had that moment where she's like what do you mean they don't usually let them walk around <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, uh sam loomis's character is not the best mental health professional <laughs> no. none of them are well we honest no one in these in these franchise films is a great there even the friday the 13th one with part seven terrible fucking therapist awful. by the way oh with bernie yeah <laughs> a demon <laughs> fucking awful fucking awful so yeah craig wasson brings this group together and he's like uh philip gave up on us they're like no he he didn't commit suicide he clearly didn't commit suicide yeah he was killed by someone we watched him screaming for help <laughs> exactly and then we we get kind of the next setup which is jennifer who is a character that says when soon as she leaves this mental hospital she's gonna go to hollywood she's gonna become an actress she's gonna be on tv she's watching critters she's watching critters at one point and then she's watching uh who is the tv host what do they come up with his stuff <laughs> yeah well <laughs> honestly it's a good misdirect yeah. because most of these kids get killed off in some sort of uh equality to what their their problems are right, right? yeah and they set her up as the cigarette burns girl right because she's constantly burning herself to stay awake and everything like that right so like instantly i'm thinking it's gonna she's gonna burn somehow you know sure and then they they go this route and it's surprising and and fucking great you don't expect her to get uh tricked by dick cavett and zha zha gabor that's who it is <laughs> right. and zha gabor with a great credit in this movie i love her little cameo scene fantastic but she's watching tv in this like break room and Larry Fishburne comes in and says what are you doing it's it's after dark and she says I'm watching TV for research and my first thought was she can't be seeing shit sitting this far away from this 13 inch TV that's mounted to the wall oh, I know here's the tiniest fucking TV I've ever seen motherfucker you need glasses <laughs> she's sitting across the room there's no fucking way she could see anything is this also when Taryn is like hit on yep. by that orderly yes oh, my yeah God. real creepy that's fucking gross bro it's not an 
80s horror movie unless there is a pervy mental patient, like a mental doctor in a, in a mental ward. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a lot of research for Terminator 2 right now. Oh, yeah. right. And that fucking orderly that licks Sarah's face and that. I'm Maybe like, the oh. best extra in a movie ever. <laughs> 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 that guy gets the shit beat out of him. I love that guy. Oh, that's the best. It's the but best. this guy needed that. Oh, this my guy God. needed Linda Hamilton to come in and beat the shit up. And mop the floor with him. That guy never really <laughs> comes back, does that was he? my point. The fact that this guy doesn't come back and get his comeuppance is crazy. Right. <laughs> well, the 80s were a different time. He should have had a car fall on him at the end of the... Like, he should have been at the junkyard. A piano or something. <laughs> like the end of Final Destination 5. Yes, so the car yes. just falls on him out of nowhere. He <laughs> has the craziest lie to this movie, which is Taryn, who is a recovering junkie right. uh, that's at this hospital, comes out of the shower. He's waiting for her and he says, hey, d- do you want to party with me? Do you want to get high? He says, do you want to party at Club Meth? Right. <laughs> great line. What the fuck are you talking about? I got the keys to the dispensary. It's a great line. It, and also, he's like 34 hitting on a 17 year old. It's real fucking gross. Well, hey, Dr. Gordon's trying to get with Hander. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> you know that? At, least he- at least Heather Langenkamp is a graduate student. This girl could not be older than 17. True. You got a point. <laughs> And then we get, this is maybe the start of the Freddy cuntiness <laughs> of him serving cunts in this <laughs> franchise. Because you would not believe it, but I also have a serving cunt note for this movie. <laughs> I, I 100% believe it. <laughs> Jennifer's watching this Dick Cabot interviewing Zaza Gabor uh, scene, and Dick Cabot turns into Freddy Krueger in the episode, and yeah. it, it cuts to white noise. Jennifer gets up to inspect the TV. Big mistake, because these giant Gundam arms <laughs> extrude out of... Yeah. Yeah. The fucking TV, grab her, Freddy's head pops out of the top of the TV. He kind of gets two lines here. He does. Which I'm not a huge fan of, yeah. but the big one here is him saying, welcome to primetime, bitch, and smashing her head through the TV. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's too much. <laughs> that was a combination of two takes, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, he had uh, the, they had the line as written, the uh, big break on TV, and then Robert England improvised the primetime bitch line. Welcome to primetime, yeah. And then Chuck Russell was like, fuck, they're both good. Yeah, <laughs> I think you go with the primetime one over the other one. Sure. But this is the ground zero for Freddie be- doing this, though. This is the ground zero of the, like, as you, he's known throughout pop culture now with yes. the bitch, yeah. this is the ground zero of it. I think. Well, and I also, I think it is the litmus test of can you hang with the rest of this series, right? Yeah. Like, I, I I know people who have been like, this is the moment that I check out of the franchise. Sure. No, th- this definitely sets the mood for where we're going in the future. Yeah, oh, no. Time. I mean, yeah, this, this is a direct line to the sequels and the super upbeat cattiness of fucking Freddy, Absolutely. which I'm not a huge fan of. The ones here are probably you know, definitely the most mean spirited, as Nathan 100%, said. 100%. But, yeah. Uh, but I think I think the most memorable ones are mostly from this movie. Sure. Yeah. No, Taryn's death in particular is fucked up. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. I mean, we get we go to the uh we go to Jennifer's funeral. Yes. Uh where we meet uh we not only do we meet Sister Mary Helena who oh, tells us science boy. ancient shit, but this oh, is where boy. this is where I wrote down We need the B story here. This is where I wrote <laughs> <Yeah>. down <laughs> Nancy's serving cunt on a silver platter at Jennifer's funeral. <laughs> it's giving outlaw cowboy the mother with no name. <laughs> does, does Philip get a funeral? Nope. No. I, what I like to think is that they just rolled them into one grave. <laughs> there's two funeral scenes in this movie, and there's a lot of victims. Mm-hmm. So some, there's some favorites being played here. It's another thing that's pretty fucked up about it is the guy who commits suicide, quote unquote, doesn't get a funeral. I know. Catholicism. I know. <laughs> they, rolled, they rolled Jennifer's death a suicide. How the fuck is it possible? Right. <laughs> And this is where we get another group therapy scene. And this is fucking wild because <laughs> this is, again, kind of like you call chapter four, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. You clearly had no foresight. Uh-huh. This is where Nancy says to the group of kids here, you're the last of the Elm Street children. And I just wrote down, yeah, about that. Right. I don't think so. See, that's the glory of it is people can keep fucking and make more kids. So. I guess. <laughs> well, in the ne- I think, well, so I just rewatched the Dream Master a few weeks ago and there's like a, a very flimsy explanation of yeah we were the last elm street kids and now now he just wants these other kids yeah. like there's basically like not really an explanation he just runs out of victims it's a very loose rendition of the freddy versus jason thing he's got to have pe- somebody he's got to have those kids bring new victims to him 
yeah. yeah, you know. Well, here's the thing too is they they play this scene that you're talking about with Craig Watson talking to Sister Helena, mm-hmm. like it's just a normal scene, and then they play it up of Nancy going, "Doctor Gordon, who are you talking to?" And he turns around and she's gone. Right? Bullshit. Nancy, if she was real, if Sister Helena was real, Nancy, the way they blocked this scene, mm-hmm. definitely would have saw her. Right. If not, you know immediately Craig Watson is fucking crazy because <laughs> she, like. She comes at the same angle, like the 180 roll. <laughs> yeah, she comes at this angle where she definitely would have saw her. And I, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I feel like it's lazy. And this movie feels a little bit lazy in aspects like that. Well, could it be that he was just the only one who saw the ghost? That's fair, but he's talking like like a normal conversation and everything. And then oh, Nancy, I see what you're saying. Yes. The way and the blocking like, is, she, it's not like she would have been like, oh, he's talking to someone and I can't see them. Right. She would have seen everything which is in this case is nothing <laughs> so the line should be something like hey what are you what are you doing over here yeah are you are you okay who the fuck are you, you talking to yourself are you yeah you fucking weirdo you're reading my <laughs> my medicine bottles and then you're also talking to no one yeah it would have been a much shorter movie is what i'm saying fondling my malaysian dream dolls oh my god the <laughs> malaysian dream doll i cannot believe that's a bookend of this movie i cannot believe uh, it <laughs> which i i had only ever seen before i watched this movie i'd only ever seen them in the office of dr chase meridian and batman <laughs> forever <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we get introduced to the idea of dream powers mm-hmm. and i wrote them down here here is a list of the dream powers we get for will it's standing and wizard powers mm-hmm. okay not well, yet though not yet, not though. yet. you're right the way they're described in this scene is will can stand uh-huh patricia arquette can do cartwheels yeah. Ooh, <laughs> kincaid is a regular creed bratton over here <laughs> Kincaid is a little stronger than normal human strength. Fucking A, check this out. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Taryn is tiny knives. So Dustin, this is the only way they could get by without getting some sort of getting, getting sued for ripping off the X-Men. Exactly. <laughs> you know? This is like Batman's <laughs> B tier of rogues gallery. Like this is the worst of the worst. <laughs> One of them is the condiment king. There you go. Condiment king. No, I just I just I get it because you're you're limited by the budget, but this just feels lazy. Some of this stuff. The, the only one that's interesting is Kincaid, who is a little bit stronger. <laughs> it also it. I do love uh, Gordon's reaction of like Kincaid, please. Yeah, it's very unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bending a chair. Ooh, but I, I I think it's not helped by look. I I love Angelo Badalamenti, mm-hmm. uh, who does the music for this film, but his score in this sequence is goofballs McGillicuddy. Goofy as fuck. <laughs> goofy. This movie's got a couple of goofy things in it uh-huh. my favorite of which is at the very end which we'll, we'll talk about when we get there oh boy okay but nathan i wanted to mention because this is where we get the dream powers and everything mm-hmm. and one of them is Terrence with her you know in relation to the last movie we talked about society mm-hmm. a hair that reaches to the heavens oh yeah because her mohawk absolutely out of control she turns into <laughs> Linnea quigley from return of the living dead <laughs> <laughs> It's it's out of control. Mohawks were such a rage back in the 80s. It's uh, insane. I love it. It's a great look. So <laughs> one of the kids doesn't get to express their dream power because they're mute. Right. And that's Joey, yeah. who is kind of checked out during the scene. Yeah. And there is this older nurse that works in this hospital. No, I mean, knowing where we go with Joey in the next movie, sure. like Joey is just straight up a hornball, dude. Yes. Like, yes. Joey in the next movie, is it the waterbed death? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. I forgot to mention, did you guys know? Notice Joey has like a teardrop tattoo in just his first scene. Are you and fucking then kidding not, me? I do not remember that. When he is first introduced, he has a teardrop tattoo Are and then it is serious? not there for the rest of the movie. He sure does. Yep. It's only in that first introduction scene, but it's not there after that. So Joey killed somebody. Do you think he murdered a <laughs> kid with the eyelids that were ripped off and they ruled it a suicide? Oh. Maybe Freddy didn't have anything to do with that one, and Joey just cut that kid's fucking eyelids off. <laughs> Man. <laughs> the, the, here we go, the nightmare spinoff. That's why he's quiet, because snitches get stitches. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Well done. So, this scene is nuts to me, because this is an older nurse. She's probably, honestly, late 20s, early 30s, bringing in this kid who's probably 16, 17, into this room. Sure. And at first, you don't know what's necessarily going on, but she says something like, oh, Joey, I've been so attracted to you. I just wanted to get you alone. Uh-huh. Can you help me take my top off? Can you unzip me? It's, the op- it's again, the opposite of the society scene from last week. It is... What's the word to describe this scene? Gross. Uh, gross. Upsetting. Gross. <laughs> gross is a good one. 
Freddy's a fucking freak yeah. because this turns out to be Freddy Krueger making out with Joey, <laughs> making out with a teenage boy. I'm your girlfriend now, Joey. <laughs> reprising his tongue bit that he did from the first movie. I mean, they never specify his sexual preferences. Yep. You know what? I, if nothing else, Freddy is a member of the LGBTQ. I will <laughs> say that he's he, <laughs> he plays both sides of the fields in this movie. That shot of the tongue coming out of Joey's mouth and Joey's like double <laughs> double grabbing it like it's <laughs> Freddy. <laughs> Kruger is an ally. There you go. Yeah, I agree. Much like Rachel Sennett in uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. He is an ally. <laughs> <laughs> so, Freddy is revealed to be this nurse here who, and I got to say, this is kind of a great visual in this movie for such a low budget. Mm. Ties Joey to this bed. The mattress in the box bring fallout from this bed frame, and below him is just a pit to hell, which visually I think is great. It's kind of like a matte painting that's animated. It's, it's honestly pretty cool. Yeah. But here's the thing. You will forget Joey Joey is part of this movie because he does not come back for a long time. Yeah, Freddy just like hangs on to him for a while. Mm -hmm. So we cut back and this is where we kind of get the origin story again, question mark, Mm -hmm. because Craig Wasson goes to find Sister Helena and this is... (laughs) This is something. Bastard son of a thousand maniacs. A uh, hundred maniacs. A hundred Let me maniacs. correct you. Let me correct you. Thank you. Son of a hundred maniacs. <laughs> so, Amanda Kruger, mm-hmm. Freddy's mother, mm-hmm. worked at this mental hospital that we're at right now. And they say she, quote, accidentally got locked in during the holidays. Mm-hmm. Whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, you know, you know how... <laughs> You know how mental institutions, they just leave... They close down, yeah. <laughs> they just leave their patients there for... They say, quote-unquote, the holidays, right. which, if you really want to think about it, is mm, Thanksgiving to Christmas, maybe? Whack Christmas. Yeah. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the further explanation is, and I guess I should put a trigger warning here? Yeah, jeez. Uh, so, Amanda Kruger was a, a nurse at this hospital. She got left behind during the holidays, mm-hmm. and then... The male patients of this hospital, quote unquote, had their way with her. And Freddy Krueger is, again, quote, the bastard son of a hundred maniacs. So the the implication here is it's not clear who his dad is. But the way that she phrases it, like, (laughs) I watched this with Ashley and she goes, that's not how that works. Yeah, that's not how (laughs) biology works at all. But the implication here is a hundred maniacs birth Freddy Krueger, whatever you want to call it. So that is the canon explanation for Freddy Krueger's origin. There is a pretty fantastic and scary moment in The Dream Child where they show her getting locked in there. And for a brief second, one of the patients turns to the camera and it's Robert England. It's really, really like the only effective moment in that movie, aside from the motorcycle. Yeah, that's the thing is like this. This feels like a B plot that they set up just to just to establish the canon for Freddy here. I think you can do it without the yeah. sexual assault. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that, but that's what I'm saying is, is that's what they chose to stick with sure. and run with for the next movie. Like, oh, I know, and now, yeah, now they're like, because if this was the last movie in the series, like it was supposed to be, then it's fine. But like, yeah, they're saddled with trotting that story out now. I just, I, I, I don't. Two things I don't need in my nightmare movies: I don't need religion, and I don't need perpetual. No, I agree. I really don't need either of those things. Absolutely. I don't need to know how Freddy Krueger was birthed. I don't I, I just don't. It's buck wild that you put those on the same level. <laughs> makes more sense. Did you say it's fuck wild? No, it's fuck wild. I might as well have. We'll roll with it. It made me, it might have made more sense if it was fucking uh, Phantom Menace where, oh, there is no father. Oh, I would have sure. dealt with that better than dealing with the hundred maniacs. I would have dealt with that better. His Freddy Chlorians. <laughs> or if it was just one that got her. I mean, that makes a little more sense. Yeah. I mean, technically that is what happened. It is just one that got her. Right. But I mean, I'd rather hear that Freddy Krueger's midichlorian count was off the charts. I just, I'd rather hear that than a than hundred maniacs. We don't know it's not. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They p- oh, Jesus my God. Oh, Christ. Nope. Oh. That doesn't make it into the episode. <laughs> yeah, you can cut that out. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, but fellas, Oof. this is where there is a breath of fresh air in this movie because- we get introduced to the great John Saxon. Best eyelashes in the biz. <laughs> oh my God. Making his return from the first movie here. And honestly, the best way I'd want to see him return. Yeah. In a bar, drinking, 
smoking a cigarette and is no longer a police officer, but a security, security guard. It is. He has a <laughs> cigarette, a shot glass, mm-hmm. a, a draft, mm-hmm. and a can of beer. This guy fucking rules. He's doing it right. He is doing it right. This is rock bottom personified. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, that's a fucking Tuesday, sir. <laughs> I'm doing fine during the strike. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Heather Langenkamp and uh, Craig Walsh come in. They're like, hey, John Saxon, you gotta help us out. You've dealt with this once before. We gotta do it again. And he, and he is not wanting to have any part of it. No. I, I just love John Saxon in these movies. He is so checked out. His <laughs> delivery of like Fred Krueger is dead. You always had a hard time understanding that. Uh-huh. <laughs> what I found interesting is John Saxon actually wrote a screenplay for this. That's and right. It, he was going to do like a the origin of Freddy thing and how he got burnt and stuff like that. And a lot of the a lot of the nuance they took that they go with later on in the series came from that script. How did he get burned? <laughs> how did he get burned? How did he get burned? How did he get burned? <laughs> uh, he had an idea to basically come. He was going to do a a Manson movie. Yeah. Mm. And about how like Charles Manson had committed the Elm Street murders. And then you know Fred, what? Like, it was a bonkers script. Yeah. Wait, what? I'd watch it. Same. I'd fucking watch it. <sighs> R.I.P. John Saxon, by the way. Uh. Boy. Love him. Oh, did he die? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did. Uh, I think it's Taryn that says, at some point, I just wrote this quote down, she had a total shit attack, yeah. which is not a thing people say. Uh, have you never had diarrhea? <laughs> you, you know what? Fair enough. I, I rescind my complaint. Peek behind the curtain. <laughs> I, I, I had some hot chicken this weekend. Oh, no. I regret it. Oh, no. You had a total shit attack? I oh. had a total shit attack, and honestly, we got to wrap up this recording. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's provocative. Anyway, <laughs> is that new? No, that one's been on there. I just haven't had any reason to use it until right now. <laughs> I would watch a total, like a complete side film of Gordon and uh, Donald, like driving around town, oh, just my getting God. the stuff they need to put Freddy to rest. Just running errands. Oh man, we got to stop at the church, dude. That that's what Freddy's nightmares should have been. Right. Was those two <laughs> as a buddy cop partner. Hey, listen, Aaron's in a smoothie is a solid date. (laughs) (laughs) I think they messed up using the the subtitle Freddy's Nightmare because what that should have been is that Peter Jackson movie that we talked about where it is Freddy's Nightmare of a bunch of kids coming into the dream world and just beating the shit out of them. That that one was called The Dream Lover. Mm, No, Freddy's Nightmare is the way to go. No, I think The Dream Lover was the Joey scene. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. No, what what shocks me here is that Gordon lets Donald drive him around and this guy is like 12 sheets to the wind. No, this guy is hammered. (laughs) This guy is hammered. It's fucking awesome. (laughs) We should also mention that the reason all this is happening is because they were fired for the shit that went down with Joey. Joey, who has words slashed into his skin and no doctors to even react to it. Doesn't it say, like, come get me, bitch, or something something like like that? that. Yeah. Yeah. Suicide. (laughs) Obvious suicide. Obvious. So the plan is, in the real world, John Saxon and Craig Watson have to put Freddy's remains to rest, which is what Sister Helena says to them. Mm -hmm. And... In the meantime, the Dream Warriors are going to go into the Dream and try and rescue Joey. Mm-hmm. That's the plan. I do love that as they're meeting to discuss this, they're in that rec room where Jennifer died and the burn stain from the TV exploding <laughs> is still on the wall. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Kincaid's over there just like touching it and shit. <laughs> it looks like when the cat exploded in Christmas Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And... They go into the dream. And so the, the idea here is that Patricia Arquette can bring other people into her dream. So when they all fall asleep, she'll bring them into the dream world and they'll attack Freddy and get Joey back. Mm. And the funniest fucking thing of this movie, maybe, is when Patricia Arquette runs into Freddy, she uses her dream powers, quote unquote, and it's her being chased by Freddy. She does a backflip off the wall <laughs> and then dives out a window down a set of stairs. Yep. It is the funniest fucking visual. <laughs> they, we loved throwing people through windows in the 80s, didn't we? Oh, what's the word? Uh, Defenestrated? It's fucking hilarious. Defenestration, no breathing. (laughs) (laughs) That that has a word? It does have a word, being tossed a window. Defenestration. There you go. You know what? We talked about grammar lessons with body, bodies, bodies. Now we're giving you uh, phonetical lessons as well, or I guess. Wait. I mean, vocabulary lessons. Yeah, I was like, phonetical, what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> I'm hammered, guys. <laughs> I'm Saxon in this episode. Instead of calling someone drunk, I'm just saying, oh, man, I'm 
Fuck, that guy is totally Saxon. I'm Saxon now. <laughs> I'm at the Saxon peak. <laughs> <laughs> he has the keys to the junkyard. And yes. I've never noticed that Why? before. It's like he's, did he get this job just so he can keep an eye on the, the bones? They never say what he's a security guard of. So maybe he's the security guard of the fucking junkyard. junkyard. <laughs> well, he was working at that mall and shopping mall. But Absolutely. then that one got blown up. Absolutely. He's working with Dick Miller before he got electrocuted. So. You know that guy was in almost every Joe Dante movie? <laughs> almost every single one of them. Almost. He's even in that Twilight Zone movie that joe dante directed part of so there's that yeah <laughs> the most pointless callback <laughs> um but you know what josh was on that episode too so there's right, a connection yeah. right there that's right so this is where taryn goes into her nightmare and uh. this is the funniest shit because she's in a back alley basically and it's so funny because when she gets in there she turns around and it's a solid brick wall mm-hmm. and then she turns around and there's a homeless guy mm-hmm. and the homeless guy walks past her and it's like where the fuck is he going of course that's freddy no no, no? she watches that guy walk past her and then she bumps into freddy who's standing behind her that's yeah. right that's right so where does that homeless guy go what, <laughs> where is he sleeping where's he what's he dreaming I have <laughs> he was the red herring he's not real dustin i know he's not real but i want to know more about that guy that guy said seemed to have like an interesting story no the the, the you're focusing on the wrong thing the important part is that i she, think i focus on the right thing no she brings <laughs> knives to a demon fight well, she brings <laughs> she brings knives to a heroin fight to be fair Touché. so in an alleyway that is totally not a movie set not 100%. at all <laughs> she's trying to cut out her addiction this death scene is upsetting this like is I, fucked. I, it's so mean like the the little mouths on her track marks right the, even his one-liner is upsetting. The fact that Freddy gets a little bit of the piss shivers when he kills her. <laughs> he does. He does get the piss shivers. What was his one-liner? I don't remember. Let's get high. That's not even clever. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Um, <laughs> Counterpoint, fuck you. Well, no, he gets a twofer on that one. When she dies, he goes, what a rush. That's true. <laughs> I think Nathan wrote that line of dialogue. <laughs> And his his bladed glove turns into a needle glove. Yeah. It's not even heroin. It's just like He's a blue. It, it looks like the ooze from the secret of the ooze. Oh my god. <laughs> I, just one of the things that I, I, I really dig, and you notice it in this scene, and I don't know if it bugged you guys or not, but I love that Freddie's voice is inconsistent yeah. like sometimes it's just just robert england's voice sometimes it's pitched down and slowed down other times it's that kind of classic growl from the first movie especially in that scene with will yeah. when he's talking to will oh, yeah. yeah like that whole first part of that until when you wake up yeah it's all fucked up and mm-hmm. and then <laughs> when the, the best one of my favorite one-liners though is when the, the chair comes down the hall and he goes it's the chair for you kid oh my god <laughs> oh, man we're, we're almost there we're almost there but I'll say this. Taryn gets injected by Freddy's needle glove mm-hmm. or in, into her heroin wounds and I seemingly dies because we don't see her again. But we did forget to mention they do kind of have before that a little knife fight with her tiny little knives yeah. and Freddy's bladed hand. So that's that. But then we cut to, I guess, th- this is where I wrote down, oh shit, I forgot Joey was still alive because <laughs> at this point it's been about 15, 20 minutes. But he's still in the dream world dangling over this pit of hell tied to this bed frame and Freddy captures uh, Patricia Arquette and Kincaid and the rest of the survivors and this is where we get another bit of lore introduced which <laughs> is anyone that Freddy kills the souls of his victims get burned into his chest or whatever yeah. sure he rips off his shirt and there's these tiny little faces it's a good effect but boy is it unsettling that's yeah, screaming mad George for you man absolutely I do think it's really funny though at, like every time Freddy has a like boasts about his power he always does like a little hey check this shit out moment mm-hmm. it's like when he cuts his finger off in the first movie mm-hmm. like this one when he pulls the pipe out of his stomach and he just kind of has that eh, yeah. like kind of look on his face it's really funny to me and, and we should say simultaneously while this is happening in the junkyard oh man this is where i just wrote in all caps hell yeah there is a th- surprise third act stop motion skeleton fight i love the cheesy skeleton fight it is great because they have a fight between the skeleton john saxon and craig Watson. And the skeleton picks John Saxon up. It impales him on a piece of sh- like a shard from a car. Yeah, it is so fucking funny how John Saxon goes out in this franchise. I do love that moment where John Saxon goes like, "It's really you, mm-hmm. you son of a bitch." Like, he, <laughs> but I, I love yeah. The skeleton kills him and then like pumps its arms up mm-hmm. in the air before it like falls apart. It's it's really silly, but I love it. It's so fucking funny. And there's that nice little nod to, bo- to body double here where they 
where he's burying right uh, Craig Wasson <laughs> in the grave. Alive. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's 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 a great little fight. And then back in the in the dream world, Will figures out his dream power when they're separated, which is he becomes the Wizard Master. It's so goofy. <laughs> which I imagine that Nathan screams that every time he ejaculates. <laughs> <laughs> every other time. <laughs> ah. Does he don the Dracula costume that this kid gets put in? Because yeah. it is not a wizard robe at all. I mean, have you met Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I yell, I'm the wizard master. Other times I yell, Black Adam. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> like you said. You can't prove that. Freddy sends his giant chair that is got spikes on it and it's motorized screaming down this hallway it says it's the chair for you kid mm-hmm. and then this little dork screams out i got wizard power and he fucking explodes it yeah with this shitty little green effect a uh, lightning effect that comes out of his fingertips and explodes it's the silliest part of the movie wait when rob zombie wrote dragula do you think <laughs> oh he was god. thinking about this wheelchair definitely oh my god. <laughs> maybe and then for no reason at all, Will sprints down this hallway towards Freddy, and then Freddy just impales him. Yeah. It's kind of the most anticlimactic death of the whole movie. And it's the worst fucking one-liner in the movie. I don't even remember what he says, so you're right. Sorry, kid. I don't believe in fairy tales. That's right. That's right. Yeah, what a dumb fucking death. But, but it, it does have some of the... Be- like, I I think we talked about this before. I love how Robert England, his physicality is Freddy, mm-hmm. and those shots where he's, like, silhouetted at the end of the hallway, the guy knows exactly how to, like, lean on a wall oh, it, you know his little his little bowels yeah. and his little tips of the hat like i, I just think he's fantastic <laughs> that man knows how to lean on a wall that man, <laughs> look if there's one thing i know he's cool as shit that was one thing i noticed <laughs> on this rewatch is how much they really do like shadow <laughs> like, they kind of like don't show freddy a lot right so freddy tries to drag each one of them through a mirror and as we get introduced to joey's superpower which again i it's just talking loudly just screaming loud noises yeah so dumb he screams shatters the mirrors and he gets his voice back and this is bar nine the funniest fucking thing and this maybe this entire franchise which Pixie is does john saxon john saxon <laughs> floating in with these sparkle effects from fucking eye movie it's so bad it is so fucking <laughs> it's so funny silly he 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 Floats into frame and he's basically like, oh, Nancy, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking deal with Freddy. Oh, oh, Kruger, he got me. <laughs> and I'll see you on the other side. And they embrace. I crossed over. He does say I crossed over. And they embrace. And then wouldn't you fucking know it? It's actually Freddy Krueger. And I'll say this. It is crazy to and shocking to kill off Nancy in this movie this way. Bold. Yeah. So when I when I saw this as a kid, like especially after seeing that first movie, she wasn't in the second movie. When Nancy died in this movie, mm-hmm. I was fucking upset yeah. when I saw this movie for the first time because like I didn't understand the concept of like killing our hero. Sure. When I was that young, and when Nancy died, like I I was shocked. Like I was I was out of it for a couple of days after I saw that. <laughs> Sure, it, it holds more days. <laughs> <laughs> it, it holds more weight than when Jamie Lee Curtis gets killed off in Halloween Resurrection. Like, <laughs> absolutely I, no shit. Yeah, I just felt like, holy <laughs> shit, we're ki- and this is only three movies in. You I know? mean, if we're if we're having this conversation now, I do think this movie's better than Halloween Resurrection. Oh, can, I think we can all all agree. Saying, I think we're all on record. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're gonna have that conversation, I mean, they kill the kid and face off immediately. <laughs> You're right. They sure fucking do. You didn't even get to lead a franchise. <laughs> well, well, in a Serbian film. Oh, boy. No. Oh, boy. We can't. No. We can't. We can't. Bad. We can't. I refuse. We can't fucking do it. No, ev- never. So, to wrap this movie up, we get a second funeral mm-hmm. for Nancy. Are you just, just going to skip over them killing Freddy? Yeah, they, they pour some holy water over Freddy's bones. No, no, no. Isn't it like a bottle of whiskey? It's a bottle of whiskey from John Saxon. That he fills with holy water. That Craig Watson fills with holy water yeah. at a church. No. <laughs> That's a great scene, too, when he goes in there and he's like, the priest catches him stealing the crucifix. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And he's like, I'll, I'll reimburse you for it. Here, keep my driver's license. I'll come back. Right, right. <laughs> so in the real world, they 
throw this holy water from this bourbon bottle yeah. onto the remains of Freddy Krueger. In the dream world, it like punctures holes of light through Freddy, seemingly killing him. But Freddy's already done the deed. Nancy is dead. Man, Patricia Arquette kills me yeah. with this little speech she has here. Yeah. Like, I'm going to dream you into a beautiful dream. I like I, it. Honestly, like is moving. I think she's fantastic. Again, it holds a lot of weight that Nancy dies like this. Yeah. This you know this kind of early into the franchise. Again, the only Oscar winner in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. <laughs> You're right. Well, her speech ties a lot more into the original ending. Right. right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, back in the real world, they have a funeral for Nancy, and one of my favorite extras that we're going to talk about when we get to bit part. <laughs> okay. But, during the funeral, Craig Watson sees Sister Helena off in the background, and he goes to chase after her, mm-hmm. and to the surprise of no one, Sister Helena was not a real person. He finds a, a, a tombstone that says, Amanda Kruger slash sister helena right born this day dies this day and he says out loud oh my god you were freddy krueger's mother you were his mother yeah wait do nuns always get to choose a new name i Um, think so i I mean isn't the whole idea that you go based off of an existing martyr yeah like 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 uh popes go after saints right like a saint yeah yeah i think i guess it would be the same for nuns or your favorite my chemical romance song absolutely (laughs) the the anthem we have to say (laughs) i actually listened to that song today cool I mean, what's the worst I could say? Uh, What is, you know, what is the worst I could say? Um, I'm Sister Black Parade. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Sister Na 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 Na. I'm Sister Doctor Death (laughs) Defy. Yeah, I I don't know that many of their songs. (laughs) (laughs) And so. Kind of like The Exorcist 3, we get a tombstone and then we wrap this movie up very fucking quickly mm-hmm. because the final scene of the movie is Craig Watson goes to sleep and he he stole, there's no other way to say it, he stole the Malaysian doll from Nancy mm-hmm. and also stole the paper mache house that Patricia Arquette was building. Yeah, why does he have those? I do not know. He, You know what? That was his prop cop. He took <laughs> it for himself. He's very selfish. He's a fan. He's a fan. He's he's a huge fan of the show, Craig Watson. Mm-hmm. But he's, he has the paper mache house that Patricia Trish Arquette was building in the opening credits of the movie, which we didn't really talk about. It was oh, yeah. pretty interesting. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and as he's falling asleep, the lights on the little house flicker on, mm-hmm. signaling uh, very similar to uh, a malignant ending here <laughs> that Freddy is still alive. But as as Mally mentioned, the original there was originally a scene where Kristen says, like, I dream about Nancy every night. Mm-hmm. And the implication was that Nancy was actually, like, watching over them and guarding the Elm Street house in the dream world. Right, right. Which that's completely cut, so that they're just basically like, yeah, who knows? <laughs> is it the fourth movie that ends with one of them looking into a fountain and seeing Freddy reflection briefly i yes. think it's yes it's that one yeah see i know we talked about this at the beginning of the episode of this being like the most uplifting of all the endings i think that one probably is because like at this one at least nancy's dead five just ends with him straight up dead i think yeah well that's fair enough and six yeah i mean all these slasher movies you can make some kind of justification for it but this one in particular yeah it's it's implied that freddie is still alive by this light flickering on but honestly and this kind of goes on to, to my silver lining which we'll talk about that could just be an electrical malfunctioning happening really if we're talking about malignant (laughs) they could be a malignant Malignant. (laughs) (laughs) so put that on the soundboard i I feel like we rushed through this episode but that's okay because there is a lot of filler in this episode the pacing is a little slow but that is (laughs) hey i stand by you mean the movie or the episode (laughs) both okay great (laughs) i stand by it i'll get to my recommendations now i think this movie hasn't aged very well you shut the fuck up (laughs) it's uh almost 40 years old at this point so am i same the seams are apparent and they honestly kind of always were Mm. i think the pacing and the direction are a little lacking I do think the effects are cool. I think the kills are very cool. Why do we let you host? <laughs> <laughs> but I think part four is better. And maybe I just haven't watched part four as much. But I just, you know, I, all I can say is this this just isn't my franchise. Mm. Halloween is my franchise. And it always will be in terms of the big three. Same with the Friday movies. I saw them all way too late. And other than the originals and the remakes, which I like, 
I just think most of these movies, partially this one included, are kind of lackluster, if I can say that. This was a big VHS watch for me. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's like a big uh, uh, nostalgia touchstone for me when I was really starting to get into horror movies. Sure. Like this was, I loved this franchise. I still have a lot of love for this franchise. I do agree that four is more fun. Yeah. And it's a little more like wackadoo. Let's have, you know, it, it's the MTV Nightmare on Elm Street movie, which is, uh, you know, has its own merits. Mm. Like It is. I mean, there's straight up like a ton of needle drops in that movie. Yeah. And it literally stars a pop star. You're, that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Um, but I I find three to be like the night like the perfect middle ground between one and four. Okay. And I and I just I don't know I I, I really have a lot of love for this one. Uh, Mally, what about you? How do you feel about this movie? Do you recommend it? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Okay. That, that's kind of how I feel. Once at least. Why not? Josh, I, I know we brought you on this episode specifically because you're you're a fan of Dream Warriors, and you mentioned on this rewatch you felt differently about it. Would you recommend this movie? I mean, yeah, it's a fun time. Now, I, I, I before watching it this time, I probably would have said this is my favorite Nightmare movie. Mm-hmm. But you know that that first one just the tone in that one it's dark. Yep. It has very you know little hints of comedy here and there. But right, and then this one you know this one definitely goes up with the comedy. How albeit it's it's a lot more crude in this one than some of the others but mm-hmm. I, I just kind of saw a lot of the like I saw a lot of the stitches in this movie this time around like, right it looks really cheap it sure does <laughs> some of the performances just aren't are on par like I really as much as I loved Nancy's character in this movie when I was younger mm-hmm. I, I do see that the the performance is a little lackluster this time watching it mm-hmm. but I still think it's a, a fun time and it has some really inventive kills in it so I definitely recommend I mean, it's not the worst <laughs> nightmare movie by any means. <laughs> not by a long shot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that's fair. I think the consensus is at least see it once. And again, I, I do feel bad because the, the the big three here, myself, Mally, and Nathan, this is not our franchise. I think we're all steeply in the Halloween sector. But again, I just fault that for, at least for me, for coming to these movies too late. I do have fun with this movie. Mm. I do like it. It's just, it's it's not aged very well. And far be it for me to say that those Halloween movies have aged very well, those sequels. <laughs> but I just think that the ideas around this movie are better than the end result if that makes any sense we should mention like when we were putting the schedule together it was almost like we were playing chicken with who the fuck was gonna put halloween 5 uh-huh. or resurrection on the schedule and then we uh-huh. all just flat out refused uh, it should be noted i still have an empty spot he fuck. sure does i was gonna say for, at this point in 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 the history of the show we have not put a halloween movie on the schedule for the for this season mm-hmm. however mally does still have one empty slot and we also reserve the right to change our minds in the, for the episodes we've already put in. But this season, don't hold your breath for a Halloween movie. However, we you know we'll see what the future holds. I do I I do know Mally goes to bat for the director's cut of Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Mm-hmm. True yeah, story he sure does. Which I have to get even more wasted if we watch that movie. All right, <laughs> why don't we get into Prop Cop? For new listeners of the show, if you're just finding us for the first time, Prop Cop is a segment uh, where every week. We look at all of the props in the movie that we're talking about this week, in this case, Number on Street Part 3, and we each take one prop from the movie, and prop is a loose term, anything physical, for ourselves. Anything physical. <laughs> this is my pick, and I'll go ahead and start. I want the pendulum that they used to fall asleep to, the little- uh, The Newton's Cradle. Yeah, exactly. The Newton's Cradle. Absolutely. I think that was pretty cool. And especially the way that goofy ass effect where they all sort of float away. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Yeah. Where it turns into a cartoon. Uh-huh. Uh, Josh, you're our guest of honor for this episode. What prop do you want from Dream Warriors? I want that fucking paper mache house. Nice. All right. That was on my list, too. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Um, in the bar they go to, we see that the bar's name is Little Nemo's, mm-hmm. and there's a <laughs> dope-ass uh, neon sign that uses like the font from the old uh, Little Nemo uh, the Adventures in Slumberland mm-hmm. comic strip. I want that neon sign. All right. All right. Mally, what prop do you want? Uh, Will's wheelchair. The one in the dream or the actual wheelchair in the real world? <laughs> the actual one. Okay. I, I did write down the death dream wheelchair and on my list of potentials. But. Death chair, the chair that eats. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be an asylum movie, right? <laughs> Probably. All right. Let's talk about bit parts. Now, some of us may not have answers for this one. 
I have one in particular mm-hmm. because I just I, I noticed him and I could not not notice him. I feel like we picked the same guy. Oh boy. During Nancy's funeral. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> there is a guy sitting front row with shades on yeah. <laughs> that I could not ignore. And I just thought that guy is too cool for school. I want to be that guy. Oh yeah. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Nathan, who who did you pick? Uh, also in Little Nemo's, right when they walk in, there's a dude with a mullet that would put uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper to shame. <laughs> like, uh, uh-huh. and I want to be that guy. Okay, Mally, did I take yours? Yep. Oh, oh well, no! Shit, sorry. Um, maybe you could be one of the audience members in Dick Cabot segment <laughs> <laughs> in that scene. Josh, what about you? What's your bit part? Uh, the homeless guy in Taryn's dream. That Great choice. Makes, that, there you go. That's a good choice. All right. Well, the reason why we are all here, the work is cut out for us, fellas. <laughs> what is the silver lining to A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 colon Dream Warriors? I'll go ahead and start and say, look, I know the ending of this movie is suggesting that Freddy is still alive. But if we take this movie at face value, which we typically do with movies in a franchise, we take the ending as the definitive ending of the series. Hmm. If we ignore those sequels... I think Freddy is dead, so Yeah. I just, I, and I'm also, I'm not referring to the other movie called Freddy's Dead. I think <laughs> Freddy is actually dead in this one. He is dead, dead. And Nancy is finally done with all this shit. Sure. Like, I know we see the light flick on on the little paper mache house at the end, but also a paper mache house is not electrified. So, <laughs> sure. you know, that's just my point. I think Freddy's dead, dead. So, dead, dead. Why don't we jump to Mally? Mally, what is your silver lining for Dream Warriors? The kids may suffer. But as with most movies in this franchise, the actual parents that were involved in Freddy's murder get away scot-free for the most part. (laughs) So true. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Nathan, what about you? What is your silver lining for Dream Warriors? Uh, Donald Thompson got to do right by Nancy at the end. Mm, Absolutely. He he went out like a hero. He tried. Yeah. You know, say say what you want about him. He got, (laughs) he literally got did in by a skeleton, which I feel like is the weakest of uh, the movie monsters, (laughs) but you know, he did what he could. Uh, Josh, what's your silver lining? Uh, Well, mine kind of plays into that too. Uh, Well, if you're, if you're one of the uh, religious people, the the Thompson family is back together again. Yeah. True. United on the other side. Yeah. John Edwards crossing over. <laughs> we always love to do this with horror movies when we can remember to do them. Mm-hmm. But, fellas, I'm going to put it to a vote. What is the best kill of Dream Warriors? And I will say, I think it is undisputed that it is Philip's death, yeah. the marionette puppet. 100%. It is awful. <laughs> like, it is, when I think about that kill, it is so fucking visceral. And the effect work is crazy good. I mean, there's a reason why they use it in the montage at the beginning of Freddy versus Jason, right? right? Like, it's just, it still holds up. Absolutely. Josh, do you concur or do you have a, an alternate? Yeah, that one would be my favorite. I mean, uh, honorable mention to, to Jennifer, the TV death is, yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. That marionette death is, is definitely one that sticks with you. Absolutely. Mally, do you concur? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well... Before we get out of here for the week, what we like to do is every time we suggest a movie on the podcast that we cover for an episode, we like to also give a pick-me-up alternative, a movie you double feature with the movie of the week. In this case, of course, is Dream Warriors. What is a movie that works good as a double pairing? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go first and say that if you like the dreams and the the physicality of what that exists like on screen and you want to do a double feature with more crazy dream shenanigans... Why not go with Inception? Oh, nice. We can see <laughs> someone with a budget actually get to play around with what a dream world looks like. Well, it's funny you say that, Dustin, because that was mine as well. And I was, <laughs> I was going to say, you know, we, we we call him Christopher Stolen on our show. And, I, you know, it's here he goes again, taking stuff from Friday. Or God damn it. See what you did to me? <laughs> taking stuff from Nightmare on Elm Street to put in his movies. Well, so. did you have a backup, Josh? Because if not, I will gladly give you Inception and go with my backup. Oh, uh, I did not have a backup, so there you go. Okay. We will give you Inception, and I'll say my second choice, which is another movie that plays with fun, and there's also a horror movie, and it's a little more modern, Last Night in Soho. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Nathan, what about you? Um, I had to go with another uh, John Saxon banger, uh, Enter the Dragon. Oh, Holy my God. Shit. Yes. Watch my guy throw <laughs> yes. down with Bruce Lee. Also, I got to throw this in the chat, but uh, y'all need to check out John Saxon's fucking Wikipedia picture. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's see it. Hold on. I'll pull it uh, up. Where he was clearly auditioning to play the Joker. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Nicholson. <laughs> that is Jack Nicholson. I love it. Is that the guy who played uh, what, Jack Napier in the early? Earlier scenes? That's oh right my gosh. Flashback. This is Joe Chill right here. <laughs> See your own kid. Oh boy. Um, while we pull this up, Mally, what is your pick me up? Field of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could count on you. I knew I could count on you. Incredible, incredible choice. I love that. All right. Well, <laughs> Oh, that really got me. Before we get out of here <sighs> for the week, does anyone have any final thoughts they want to give out on Dream Warriors? No. <laughs> okay. I think I've said everything I need to say. Yeah. All right. Well, if you haven't already, listener, please subscribe, rate, leave us some feedback wherever you are. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show. Uh, you can get us on pretty much everywhere you get podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist to join in on all the fun regarding our show. And Josh, since you are a guest of honor, please plug any projects that you have that are active right now. Uh, you can uh, hear me and our um, my co-host on the VHS Files podcast. We uh, we have a video version on YouTube uh, at VHS Files. You can find us in the search engine and anywhere you get your podcast. We just uh, released our episode on Night of the Demons recently. Mm. It's a pretty fun episode. I love that movie. So. All right. Can I, can I, since you're talking about movies that begin with the the prefix night of the can i suggest a movie for you guys to cover on your show if you haven't already sure i just saw for the first time last year a movie that i hauled near and dear now to my heart night of the comet oh yeah absolutely a great fucking movie we have not done night of the comet it is actually on our list of things to do we oh my god we have done night of the creeps though that's and a good I, one too <laughs> i recommend that one if you haven't seen it all right all right that's a good one too but no night of the comet was i saw it for the first time with no expectations and had a fucking blast with it so it scratches that 1980s cheesy horror movie itch if you've never seen it yeah oh, absolutely all right well i think i've got nothing else to say about dream warriors but uh next week is mally's choice and he is going to give us a clue for what we're talking about in part four of five when it comes to our spooky linings of season seven so mally why don't you try and give the clue before you get cut out again. Well, no, just have Nathan say it so I, in case I do get cut out. Oh, off. you want Nathan to say your clue? Okay. Yes. Nathan, go ahead. Ain't a dick on the planet good enough to offset a demonology hobby. <laughs> demonology hobby. Oh my God. Great clue. I've seen next week's movie. I don't even remember what he's talking about. <laughs> I am so excited to revisit next week's movie because I, I don't know what it was about my mood when I saw it the first time, but mm -hmm. I left that theater fucking jazzed. I, I remember seeing that movie before either of you and being like, eh. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I loved it. I did too. I am interested to revisit it. I am also going to caution us not to say the name of next week's movie too many times because I, I can't risk it. So <laughs> nobody say the name of next week's movie, okay? Beetlejuice. No, nope. Beetle oh, I'm about to say it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Josh, for for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode on Dream Warriors. Thanks for having me. And as always, in the name of Loric, Prince of Elves, Demon Be Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you hiding at, you bird faced pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Oh. Look it up!
Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks. Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!